Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sutnewski. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. Now, the title of this video might sound familiar to you, and that's because I made this same kind of video a few weeks ago. But in that video, I used a free app called Magic Eraser. In today's video, we are going to be using an app called Affinity Photo. So the best way I can describe Affinity Photo is basically what LumaFusion is to video creators, Affinity Photo is to photographers. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. Step number one for the freeze frame video is going to be to drop the video you want to use on your main timeline in LumaFusion. What you want to do before you start making any cuts is to go in and do all of your color correction and color grading. Now we want to decide where we want to make the cuts to where we have our model do the poses. So I'd like to do one while I'm sitting here in the chair. So you make a cut right exactly where you want to have that done and you just make a scissor cut right there. Then what you want to do is expand that out and go to the very last frame right before the cut and send a photograph of that to your photo roll. So we're just going to hit the share button and take a snapshot of that and that's going to put that right to your photo roll. Go to the next section and this looks like a good space here. You would hit the scissor to make a cut and once again we're going to take a snapshot of that and it's going to right to the camera roll. Right here where I'm leaning up against the wall going to take a snapshot of that as well and I think three is going to be good enough for this area because this is out on my deck and it's a, a rather small space. If I did any more than three it just would look too congested and ridiculous. Okay so now what I want to do is go into Affinity Photo and we are going to erase out the backgrounds from the pictures that we sent into our camera roll and we're going to launch Affinity Photo and this is the user interface for Affinity Photo. There are different personas that you can work in. And personas, they're basically just a fancy word for a workspace for each thing that you're trying to do. So let's go through the different personas. And these are going to be found in the upper left-hand side of the screen. We're immediately going to be in the photo persona, which is highlighted purple. The persona right next to it is going to be the select persona persona. That's the persona that we're going to be in while we're removing the background from this photograph. The next one over is going to be the liquify persona. Next one over is the develop persona. The next one after that is tone mapping. And the next one after that is uh, it's an additional exporting tool. You can of course use the export tool over here as well. If you ever get lost in Affinity Photo, you're not sure where to go or what the different personas are or what the tools are within the personas, there is a question mark on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Go ahead and press down on that question mark and that is going to be a quick reference guide for you to see what the different tools are, the names of the personas, and also the tools or the workspaces on the right hand side of the screen. What we're doing today is removing the background out of this picture. So we need to go to the select persona for that. And you can see once I hit that persona that the tools changed on the left hand side of the screen. One thing that I want to point out when you see some of these different tools and there's a little upside down triangle or almost like a little dog ear if you double tap on that tool, that is going to bring a flyout menu. So not only is that a tool, but there's additional tools within that tool. What I'm going to do to remove the background out of this photograph is go to the freehand tool, which is right there. And I am just going to freehand an outline of myself. It really doesn't have to be perfect because I am going to refine this. And you'll notice that this little toolbar down here is going to disappear as soon as I get close to it. Working in Affinity Photo with the Apple Pencil is just such a pleasure. It makes it so much easier and precise. 
So once we've done the rough outline of me, you'll notice that on the bottom of the screen, another pop-up bar has come up. And what we're going to do from here is choose refine. And this is going to allow Affinity Photo to refine that selection that we made. And actually that looks not, not bad at all. But what I wanna do is be very precise with this. So I want to clean up the edges here. We're going to make the pixel brush that I'm working with significantly smaller. Right now it's at a 50, so we want to drastically reduce that. And so what we need to do is just hit the width of the pixel and what we're going to do is just by moving the Apple Pencil back and forth, you can see the size of the brush that we're going to be working with. But let's say that you don't have an Apple Pencil or you can't make that happen. If you just tap on with, it's going to do a pop-up bar and then you can input the specific brush size that you want to work with. What I wanna do is clean up the edges of my hat here and on my arms. And that is going to be the foreground of the picture. So being that I want to adjust that, we are going to come down to where it says adjustment and click through until it gets to foreground. So now I'm going to take my Apple Pencil once again and just draw in areas that are highlighted red in the foreground. Whenever you pick up your pencil from a certain area, it's going to go into the refinement mode. After that last refinement, it's highlighted some of the background as well along with me. So I want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is go down to adjustment and click through until it says background. If you want to move this picture and this way you can zoom in and zoom out, you have to do it with two fingers because if you only use one finger, it's going to assume that you're drawing with the Apple Pencil So I used the free hand to start this project off. There's also a tool in here that's called the flood fill tool, where let's say that it was me up against a wall that was a solid color and didn't have all of these lines. If I had just hit the solid color wall, Affinity Photo would have done a really good job at highlighting me away from that solid color wall. So if you have different things like that, you can use those different tools. You don't have to use the free hand. There's also uh, a smart selection brush tool, which is this one over here, which again, you can use to freehand draw in, and then you can add and subtract from there. Okay, so once I'm done with the selections and the refinements, the next step is going to go back to that bottom lower toolbar and hit apply. So once I hit apply, I just want to come over to the right hand side of the screen. Do you see this second icon down that looks like a stack of papers? That's your layers. So when you touch layers, what it's going to do is show you the different layers that you've performed, basically the different things that you've performed while you're working in this picture. So when I imported the original photo in, it started my very first layer and named it background. Once I hit apply and selected me out of the background, that immediately generated another pixel layer with just me. So let's say I wanted to go in and delete what I've just done. I could highlight that and throw it in the garbage can. Or let's say I wanted to delete that original photo. I could go to that and throw that in the garbage can. Before I export this out, I do want to say if you were confused by all of that and you're just using Affinity Photo to remove some elements of your photograph, you just want one thing in a photograph and you want to erase everything else, of course you can what I call is like a backdoor way of doing it, like a cheater's way of doing it. And you would go to the photo persona and you would go to the eraser icon and you could just erase it. So let me go to my original background layer and I'm going to duplicate that layer. 
And what I'm going to do is just go in and choose eraser. It's going to bring up another toolbar of how you can refine that eraser down here. It's going to show you how big you can make the eraser. And you can just use the eraser to just simply erase away that picture as well. Okay, so now when you get closer to whatever it is that you want to maintain in the picture, you're going to refine that eraser. Now I've got the eraser all the way down to 25. There is the finished product of just utilizing the eraser tool. Okay, so I want to export the first one that I did. So I am going to come over to the page that looks like it's dog-eared and go to export. And this is the export page. So yes, we want to keep it as a PNG and we are going to double click on the untitled file name. And I am going to hit picture three freeze frame ff hit the keyboard down and hit ok choose which folder to save it into in my icloud drive save and that is going to immediately send that over into my icloud drive so let me go ahead yep there it is so i am going to import that into LumaFusion. So what I'm going to do now is just grab each one of the photos that I did and line them up and just drag them out until I get to their cuts. And of course, just like I showed in the other video, we can double click on the pictures and to make it a little more dramatic, we can always change up the coloring. Uh, we can make them brighter. We can make them a little transparent so let's go into blending and we'll dial back the transparency of them not too much and of course you want to delete that picture once you get to the end of that frame because you want it gone when you walk away the end so this was just a very quick look at Affinity Photo. This weekend, I really want to get in and hit the tutorial like I said I was going to do a few months ago. But, you know, things get in the way. You get busy. You know, I just don't want to go through the personas and show you the personas and say what the tools are. No one's going to remember that. So I think what I want to do is bring in an actual work product. I don't have channel art right now. I only have my little picture of myself. So I think... What I'm going to do is build my channel art in Affinity Photo. This way you'll get to see how I construct that, all of the different tools that I'm using to make that happen, what I'm using to adjust the picture. I mean, I, I think that is probably going to be the best way to tackle that. Once again, thank you very much for joining me for another freeze frame video. And until next time, wear your sunblock.